diversity of our 7,000 islands offer a million experiences waiting to be discovered. But the waters that separate them from each other pose a barrier. Our next forum will highlight the second of our five A's of tourism development, access. As we tackle promoting island tourism through the increase in gateways, the key to discovering the different island beats of the Philippines and the ASEAN. At the doorstep of our efforts lie the need for wider and better access. From opening up ports and increasing gateways, there is a need to build a greater network of transportation through additional highways, roads, and other means which tourists can use in exploring one island at a time. Enhancing the experience of a mere accessible and connected ASEAN region. Let's learn more through our distinguished guests. Please welcome the Chairman and CEO of Megawide Construction Corporation, Mr. Edgar Saavedra. We also have the COO of the Philippine Tourism Board's Pro Promotions Board, Miss Marie Venus Tan. The Provincial Governor of Palawan, Philippines, Governor Jose Chavez Alvarez. The COO of the Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority, Tieza, Mr. Pacholo Paragas. The Chair of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Council Member of ASEAN BAC Philippines, Mr. George Barcelon. And the Deputy Director General for Promotions of the Malaysia Tourism Promotion Board, Dato Mohamed Razip Hassan. And of course, to facilitate the discussion, please welcome Lifestyle and Events host, Miss Isa Liton. Good morning! Good morning, World Trade Center! Thank you very, very much, Megan. Good morning to my panelists. How about putting your hands together for an awesome Forum One? My name's Isa Letan, and yes, as we're going to lunchtime, I'm gonna try to hold your attention for Forum Two, discovering the different island beats with an esteemed panel joining me on stage. However, we do have a mini stage in the midst of our audience area. I'd like to introduce our interveners who at any point of our discussion today can ask questions depending on what our panelists are talking about. They, I believe, will be asking questions on your behalf, our beloved audience. Joining me, we have the General Manager of Tralulu, Mr. Joseph Alec Heradilla. Give us a wave. Alec, give everybody a wave. And joining him is Department of Tourism Regional Director of Region 8, Karen Diopez. Hi, Karen. All right, good morning, panelists. All right, Forum 2, discovering the different island beats. First off, being in a tourism summit, it's all about getting people, all people from all over the world, to come over to what we have to offer. So let's start with not just one, but two tourism promotion boards present today. Philippine Tourism Promotion Board and the Malaysia Tourism Promotions Board. How do we get, let's set the stage, 
How do we get people to come over? How do we sell the Philippines? How do we sell Malaysia? Who would like to start, Ms. Venus or Razip? Thank you very much, Isa. Uh, let me just tell everybody that um, TPB, not a lot of people know what TPB is, 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 I say, is a, as a company. It is the uh, tourism, marketing and promotions implementing arm of the Department of Tourism. And indeed, it is our business to really attract uh, travelers, both international and domestic, to travel around the country. To get them to come over. Get them to come over and get them, even domestically, to travel around the country. And um, starting off with that uh, question, how, is that, um, you know, uh, the secretary mentioned earlier about sustainability. It is really a... Uh, a balancing act. That is the core of uh, tourism today. And talking about responsibility and responsible stewardship. The Philippines is an archipelago. It has a very um, unique uh, geography. And indeed, it has a carrying capacity. So here we are, sustainable tourism. And how do we bring people to a country whose core is sustainability and preserving its natural resources. That's, a, that's, quite a, that's quite a challenge as far as we are concerned too. That's a we big are in, scope. That, exactly. We are in the business of bringing in. We are graded by how many tourists we, that come to the country and yet we talk about sustainability. The, the uh, TPB has a new marketing direction and there are three pillars that we're working on at the moment. High spend, extended stay, an optimal experience. This High is spend, extended stay, optimal, optimal experience. experience. And this is where we are putting premium into the destination. And so we are now going to attract people that can really put premium into the Philippines. But having said that, as I said, we're still graded by how many tourists we bring here. We are now going to leverage on mice, meetings, incentives, conventions and events. And this is where the bodies will come from. And not only bringing in the bodies, but you're bringing quality visitors that will come to the Philippines, making sure that the Philippines is indeed there to spouse sustainability and really protect not only the country, the, the natural attractions, but of more essentially and fundamentally protect also our natural uh, endowment and which is our people, our culture, our heritage. And this is where we are going to start drawing people to come to the country. It is motivation that will be the key and interest will be the driver that will bring in the tourists. Thank you very much, Venus. Let's give her a round of applause. That's the plan. That is the game plan of the Philippine Tourism Promotions Board. What about Malaysia? Razip from Malaysia Tourism uh, Board Promotions much. Board. A very good morning. Uh, thank you. And just say, Mangadang Umaga po. Nicely said. Magandang Umaga! <laughs> Kayo naman, palakpaka naman dyan. Welcome. Okay, there you go, and Razip. My job here is to promote Malaysia. You know, uh, Tourism Malaysia is one agency under the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture where you can see the combination of very powerful product that to be promoted to overseas and also to the local. And uh, we have similarity with uh, uh, Philippines where the, the main uh, uh, objective is to draw in more international tourists to a destination and look at what we offer, look at our products, look at our services, and also to understand the trend and also the behavior of the uh, tourists from different parts of the world because we just cannot apply one single tool for everyone. So this is very, very tricky business. Uh, we've been uh, discussed uh, in the first forum where a lot of consideration has been taken into cons consideration uh, to make uh, a destination very, very powerful in terms of uh, the products and the services. So, this, I would say that um, we have to be very. 
Okay, that's okay. Sorry, you were saying? Yeah, uh, as a destination, uh, you have the responsibility to look at the, the products. And services. Yeah, and services. Because that is the foundation to draw in uh, the tourists, not only for the international, but also for the local. As you know, the ASEAN is very big. Uh, region uh, not less than 650 million tourists so this is the big potential uh, for us in ASEAN I would say so the drive here is obviously the same we want people to come and the ASEAN region is a collective of 25 more than 25,000 islands so echoing one of the points in our first forum the idea of cooperation we're each other's competitors, and yet we, we are each other's allies. What makes us unique within the collective? Venus and uh, Razif, what will make us unique within the collective? How do we get people to go to our different islands? Um, I, I look at it more, not as a competition, but complementation. Nicely said. Yeah, I, I think that we should all complement one another. I, there's no sense in competing. Uh, I, I, I myself don't look at Thailand as a competition. Thailand is a landlocked country, and certainly it can really accommodate mass uh, tourism uh, influx. The Philippines is an island destination. We are composed of very fragile <laughs> islands. And so uh, I, I don't think that we can compete in that sense. So what I'm saying is that what we can do is work on the strength of the Philippines rather than look at competition. Because once we start looking at competition, we're sharing that pie. When we look at the Philippines, I think we should have this, the whole pie. We should have the whole pie. And so what, I'm, what we can do is that focus on the strength and assets of the Philippines. We should start focusing on culture. We should start focusing on an artisans, an artisanship. We should look at our people more and more and give that boost of interests. We should focus more and more on what makes people travel nowadays. It has changed paradigm. People are no longer just looking, about, looking for beach. People are now slowly looking for immersive, experiential destinations, which means that people more and more are looking to interact with people. And I think this is where the strength of the Philippines lie. Because once you look at interest, you have content, you have narrative. And to me, the Philippines has a lot of stories to tell. You can talk about even a destination that have folklores. The certain folklore could be an interest driver. And that is where our culture, culture lies. And this is a drawing power where we can bring in really international, both international and local travelers to look at our destination in different light. Let's give that a round of applause. That's a nice way of putting it, of drawing particular audiences or tourists to the Philippines. Yes, we got beaches. Yes, we got food. Yes, we got, you know, that's one thing all islands in the Southeast Asian region have, in the ASEAN region have. But we got to make it unique. So yes, that people, Filipino people particularly, give yourselves a round of applause. You're the reason why people should go here. Now let's hear from Malaysia. How would you like to draw what makes Malaysia unique? Well, um, um, our size is not as big as Philippines. You know, um, uh, in terms of islands, we have more, not more than 200 islands as compared to 7,000 islands that you have in Philippines. But here again, uh, you've got to be very focused, to be very selective. Uh, when you develop one island, you have to really put in your mind, uh, your heart, that what exactly this particular island. I just take one example of Langkawi. Okay, Langkawi. Uh, Langkawi is, is a dream destination for many uh, tourists from all over the world. And many flights, many new hotels are, are being built 
and uh, top brands are also there. You're talking about all these, uh, all beyond the regional uh, uh, brands. And, uh, and also, um, you have to give a status uh, to an island. For Langkawi, it has been accorded by the uh, UNESCO as the global geopark in 2014, in 2004. And um, I'm sorry, 2007. And before that, it has been granted as the duty-free island in 2007. So you can see that uh, you have to set the direction for that island. Then you have to look into the product again, as mentioned just now, and also how the readiness of the island to receive tourists, uh, tourists from uh, uh, from the regional, uh, from uh, long haul or short haul and medium haul market, where you have to attract more airlines to come and more brands uh, there. And uh, failure to do so, then there will be uh, a big impact to the local society where they cannot really deal with the sudden pressure, the sudden stress that bring, uh, that brought in by tourists that from all over the world. Right, right, right now that we are uh, promoting uh, to China, and they have uh, 100 million uh, for outbound, and we just to have around 5 million or 8 million. Just imagine with the number of tourists coming to one single island, you have to ask whether are you ready to receive this, and you are ready whether you have the infrastructure, whether you have the skill, whether you have all the what has been mentioned in the forum one just now. Thank you very much. Okay, Razit touched on a very good point. He, let's concretize things then. So instead of just talking about ideas, which already some issues were highlighted in Forum 1, take Forum 2 as a case study of sorts. Langkawi, Malaysia was already given as a good example of something thriving as a tourist destination. We have with us Governor Alvarez of, San Vicente, of Palawan. Let's give him a round of applause. So... Putting things in motion now, we are doing the work of getting tourists, global tourists, to come over. Now the work begins. They are coming. What should be in place to make it work? What should be in place to make their, their time, their money, their effort worth it to get to their destination? So now we'll be hearing from our friends not just from Tiesa, but from the uh, business side as well. And as a good example or case study from the Philippines, Governor Alvarez from San Vicente, Palawan. Governor, would you like to start with this one? What makes things work uh, from the point of view, uh, not just of Langkawi, but to receive tourists? San Vicente, Palawan has proven to be a very good example of how something just works right. Everything is in place. What makes it work? San Vicente is not all of Palawan. It's just one. We have Palawan, and I am uh, getting the queue from Joey. We are building two regional airports now. Two. And we will build two more international airports, one in the north, another in the south. So the North American uh, market can directly land in Tai Tai, and also the North European market can directly the Airbus. 350s can land directly there, and we're now building a 600-kilometer, six-lane highway, ease of access from one point to the other. I'm getting this from Joey Conception. Uh, very, very short talk about a year ago, but I'm doing it. I am not a politician. I am there as Gina's agent of change. Let's give that a round of applause. See, case study, it's actually being done. So yes, obviously Palawan's getting ready for the influx. You're We're ready. building 15 hospitals. 15. Every 100 uh, every 100 kilometers, there's a very nice and well-equipped hospital to make the tourists very, very comfortable and, of course, confidence in going to the islands. We're uh, doing all the water infrastructure from every barangay, 367 barangays with 5 million peso budget for each barangay to have clean water. mineral water, mineral water quality available for the residents and, for and also for the tourists. Nice and we create safety, safety for the tourists. Any atrocity committed by our locals 
with foreign tourism, with foreign tourists, especially from Europe and North America, they find a change agent that put them, put them in jail. <laughs> that is how we take care Security. of our tourists. Security, safety. I, I like how Governor A actually broke, the, broke it down already and he's all fired up about it. Governor A, yeah? I'm firing you another. I'm, I'm asking you to be excited as we are in Palawan. We're building a highway from Manila to Batangas and Batangas one hour to Mindoro, three hours to the southern Mindoro and in three hours you are in Coron and this will be available by next year. You can drive all the way to Palawan. Drive in your own car, in your own comfortable time. And then we connect you to Malaysia, to Kota Kinabalu, passing four heritage sites. One of that is Puerto Princesa Underground River. Second is Tobataha, the most beautiful underwater coral gardens in the world. And we have Mount Kinabalu in uh, Kota Kinabalu, and we have Molo Mountains in Sarawak. You drive all the way from Manila to the equator, my friends. Get excited about Palawan. Drive all the way to the equator be, uh, via our uh, nautical and uh, build highways through Malaysia. That is our invitation to everyone. And that will happen before the end of next year. Before the end of this year, you can drive all the way to Palawan. Before the end of next year, you can drive all the way to the equator using the Palawan as plat platform for uh, tourism to visit these four UNESCO heritage sites. That's how tourism is done! Give Governor Alvarez a big, big round of applause. He not just broke it down for us, but yes, he even invited all of you. That's how it's done. Let's break it down some more because, of course, we do have other wonderful case studies to, to highlight. I want to direct the attention now to Mr. Edgar Saavedra of uh, Mega White because First access point, Governor Alvarez touched on access points, airports. And one of the highlights, and you're very, very proud of, is the Mactan Airport, yes. International Airport. Let's get to that first. The second, the tourist lands in a particular big destination. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, how do we, what should be there, how things should be done? Mr. Edgar. Okay. Um, Isa, when we took over the airport in Mactan last 2015, the traffic, the, the traffic uh, of the fa passenger was used to be only 6 million. Now we're expect to end by this year of 12 million traffic. Double. So we're growing 15 to 20 percent every year. And uh, if you look at the local uh, economy, uh, prices of hotels are, have gone up 20 to 30 percent. Occupancies can go as high as 100 percent in Cebu. And... Um, what we did when we took over also, we used to have only seven international flights, and now we have 20 international flights direct. Almost times three. Almost. Yes. Okay. And um, the, the plan, the strategy of the, uh, of the team is really to make Cebu as a tourist hub because 80% huh. of the tourists is still lands in, and connect in Naia. So the plan of the, uh, or the, of the company is to promote Cebu together with the... Uh, uh, LGU and the, uh, um, Cebu, uh, the, the Cebu Hotel Association and DOT is uh, to, get, uh, to, get, to create more local uh, the domestic uh, co connection, domestic flights, wherein eventually these long-haul flights, not, uh, these tourists naturally will just come in because most of the local domestic flights are still in Manila. Yeah. So all of this, the connectivity, as we've been speaking since this morning, is very crucial. In fact, if, if, uh, if you talk to Singaporeans, a lot of Singaporeans love to go to Palawan, but their main concern, we always hear um, questions like, you know, to get there, it will take us 12 to 14 hours. Yep. So, uh, and they're willing to pay. So they were willing to pay, but the hassle, the hassle, so the problem is, they said, so we always end up going to like Phuket Some, yeah, because it's else. nearer and it's more convenient. So I guess all of this is uh, the thing. I think it's happening right now because as you know, the challenge in Philippines, we have 7,000 islands. This also creates more challenging for our uh, regulators for the transportation and creating infrastructures. But 
from the business sectors, this can also be an opportunity. Oh, yes. An opportunity. So now we're working with uh, local ferries. When you come to Cebu, you have the option to connect to domest more domestic flights. You have the options to connect to um, ferries. Boats, and, yes, land. Yes, now um, hopefully, um, we eventually we, the, the, the target is to really create Cebu as the, uh, the tourist hub of the Philippines. Thank you very much. A round of applause for Mr. Edgar, please. That's still a touch point. That's still landing. I want to focus now. I want to draw the attention of our friend from Tieza. That's Cholo Paragas. Because, uh, again, Governor Alvarez broke it down in so many levels. I just wanted to highlight first the touch point of landing. And, of course, the, the transportation, ease of access. What else do you think makes uh, tourist destinations work? You highlighted first also the... Is it ready to accept yes. these massive numbers, the capability? Yes. I, I think right now, even when the first forum, the biggest concern is really the tourism absorptive capacity. And in terms of the capacity, one of the main reasons that people travel a lot, mostly to do developed countries, is the moment they get down, they know, that they know what to expect. You know that there's a perfect signage. The moment they need to go to the bathroom, it's 100 meters away. They need to go to a different area of the location. They don't have to worry about knowing how to get there. Yeah. And in terms of being in infrastructure, specifically for tourism, it's something that we have to deal with. And the first thing that we do is really planning it first. Master planning a the area. Master plan. And checking what would be the components that you'll be needing moving forward. And then looking into it, some people take this for granted, and I'd love to use it as a proof of concept on Vicente Palawan. We're looking at the setbacks. We're looking at the height re requirements. We're looking at the, the guidelines towards development. Why are we doing this? The biggest reason we're doing this is because no question that the private sector is the most active part towards tourism. We need to make sure that the supply chain is created, it's recognized, and we know what components. And the most important part of that is we cannot stop at planning. You have to look at when are the timelines really going to happen. We keep on saying, you know, we Follow can do through. this, we can do that, we can do all of these things. The deliverables have to place, be placed. And I'm actually, it's something for someone in this age. We're not the millennials, we're not the, you know, um, the more mature group. I'd like to say the very um, educated group. We're in between. Yes, we're in between. And we'd like to see that moving forward, how Sir Joey has really been activating all of these things, wherein the synergy between government and the private sector is really, really happening. And we're not even dealing on the national level. We're talking the ASEAN, just to give an idea. I think um, in terms of volume, we're talking about 400 million square meters uh, for the whole of ASEAN, for all 10 countries. And then in the country alone, we are number seven in terms of um, number of islands. We are fifth in terms of coastlines. And we haven't even started talking about the mountains, all the other locations. Yeah, the actual specific destinations. Yes. We need to plan it out, create a proof of concept, and then replicate it to, in different other locations to ensure that all of these things, all of the standards, regardless of who the local government, regardless of which administration moving or forward, it can be consistent, it can be replicated, it can be concrete, pun intended on that one. Okay, Cholo, we're going to get back to this nitty-gritty. Now Cholo is actually dividing it into very particular areas that we can work on to make it happen. But I'd like to go back first to Razip. You echo some of the sentiments you've heard so far from Governor Alvarez, from Edgar, about airports and about even business opportunities. Would you like to comment, Razip, on what you've heard so far? Is it echoed or mirrored in Malaysia? Or you do things differently? Uh, well, um, the beauty of tourism industry is that you have to respond to the, to the trend. Trend? Yes. Uh, at one time, Tourists are looking for just physical attraction. They want to be there, and then uh, they uh, lying on the beach, sunbathing, and then you know walking along the beach. That's it. But again, now the tourists have come up with different behavior because they have different background, their condition, their, their daily life, education, and also their upbringing. So the expect uh, the expectation now is very very different. Experience, Experience. as Miss Venus was yeah. saying. And I'd like to, to, uh, to, re to echo from our friend from Philippines that mentioned earlier, where they want to, to be part of the society. 
They want to see uh, the lifestyle, the culture. So they want to be part of the system. The ecosystem must be there. So let's say you're talking about homestay or you know, rural tourism. They, they, they will not just looking at this product from the, uh, from the window of the hotels. So they want yeah. to see there. They'll to go, go there. Yeah, experience, They'll experience yeah. it there. Yeah. And in the process, you can see the benefit of this will be to the locals. More business will be uh, uh, open, you know, big and small. And then more infrastructure will be put in place. So all come, you know, uh, I would say automatically, but the process is there. Uh, that's one. And then um, another area that I would like to put forward is that, uh, okay, we invite them to a destination, but we want to make sure that they contribute to the society. That they give something they give, back. Yeah. Don't just visit and uh, exploit. Yes. You have to give something yeah. back. You have okay. to buy something, the souvenirs and all these things. Just like yesterday, I went to... Um, uh, uh, Tagatai? Tagaytay. You know, I, I did a lot of shopping, you know. So <laughs> that's the kind of uh, experience that we want the tourists uh, done uh, in, in this particular destination when they go uh, for holiday or for even for whatever reason they go there. But that's why tourism, again, that's why tourism is really such a lucrative area to, to improve on or to get something bigger done. So let's break it down now because speaking of... Uh, business, you hear it always. There's an opportunity. There's a business opportunity. That's why we have our friend here from the Philippine Chamber of Commerce, Mr. George Barcelon. I was saving you for last because now as we are driving to making things happen, a round of applause for Mr. George Barcelon, please. To make things happen, I'll spell it out, we need money, right? And that's where business Opportunities come in. Tiesa will also pipe in once pipe in as we go through this. Business opportunities to make things happen. We have the destination. What's missing? Where would you like to start? Sir George? Uh, good afternoon to my fellow panelists. Good afternoon to all the delegates who are here today because you're interested in this tourism sector and you can make a difference. I, I sit here wearing two hats. I'm uh, representing Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industries. And I'm also with uh, Joey, our chairman for the ASEAN BAC. First of all, tourism has always been a silo in the advocacy of our chamber. The membership of our chamber consists of mostly MSMEs, micro, small, medium enterprise. And we're spread across the whole Philippines. Knowing that the Philippines is an archaeologic country, we have 7,000 the La latest count was 7,600 islands. Depending on high tide, low high tide, tide, low tide yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we have been uh, encouraging our local chambers to really look seriously into the sector. Yeah. And uh, we have, we focus on the soft skill, the training side. Yeah. This we have is worked, people. Yes, Again, this is where Ms. Venus was saying that's needed. people are Yes, the people are, are that's worth needed. We have done a survey on the skills mapping uh, funded by the federal government of Germany. And we want to expand the scope. We feel that uh, we should really focus on tourism and what are the skill sets needed. We'd like to work closely with TESTA. TESTA is our Technical Educational Skill Development Academy. And uh, we'd like to be involved in the programs that they have. Okay. So that, you know, Talking about tourism, you're really talking about inclusivity. You're talking about the small guys, yeah. okay, that you can help them. And the trickle-down effect is very big. I traveled all over the world, and I see that, uh, you know, a lot of countries in Europe, they just, I mean, their, their economy sometimes is just based on their heritage, the history. Okay? And uh, with that, they, their, their uh, tourism uh, numbers in their impact on their GDP is normally double digits. Here, we are 13%, that's not too bad, but there's a long way to go up. Okay. So we feel that uh, aside from what was mentioned earlier, infrastructure, roads, connectivity, airport, okay. one factor is very important, the connectivity in ICT, information. You know, we have tourists coming all over the world, and we ourselves, we're used to being connected. We're used to having access information in our fingertips. 
So this is where I think that uh, the government should really focus and fast track. And earlier, I was talking to one of the intervener, Alec, and uh, I mentioned that I hope the Department of Tourism would set up a department wherein they can help the small guys in the digital platform, okay? We can encourage, you know, small guys all over to look for uniqueness of their country. We are very di biodiversity, our country. I have heard people interested in coming here just to bird watching, you know? It's a small business, but it's an attraction. So we encourage, hopefully, with the government private sector to make the country in the radar. Okay. They the need other to contribute. They need yeah, to contribute to that. They need to contribute, to yes. The other areas that I think that this effort is not only the uh, businessman or the government, but we should include the law enforcer. That is very important. I mean, the safety factor is very important. Governor Alvarez was nodding his head, yes. Yes, the safety factor, and he mentioned about every 100 kilometers setting up a hospital. I think that's, that's, that's very good uh, because we have to set also a certain hygiene and food standard. Sanitation, yeah. Sanitation. Uh, and lastly, I don't want to take too much time, is that we have to be focused on what, who are the tourists we want to attract. We are very much in need of tour guides, depending on what country, because of the language barrier. That's something we can work on, yes. Yeah. Yeah. If we're focusing on certain countries, uh, well, of course, now we're trying to attract more Chinese visitors, and I heard they, they are in need of more you know, tour guide that speaks the language. Okay. But having said that, you know, two most populous countries in the world is China and India. And you know, India is a country that I think we should work on, primarily it's because we don't have any language barrier. They speak English. Yeah. Okay. So the soft skills that's needed for the country to promote tourism must be looked at. Okay. And uh, we, in our own small way, as I said earlier, on the technical skill sets that we hope to help the small guys have a, have a play in this tourist sector. Thank you very much. Ms. Venus is nodding her head the whole time Mr. Uh, George was talking. Because this actually bridges your benta with the actual experience. The selling matches the delivery, the deliverable. Am I right, Ms. Venus? That, that's, that's absolutely right. Uh, we, in TPB, because it's the marketing arm, we cannot market anything that's not present. So the product needs to be in place because, before we are able to market anything. But this is, I like the, how the topic is going on and how George was emphasizing on the small um, guys, small and medium um, enterprises. And this is, I think, where the direction of the TPB is going. Um, I, I, I look at it on the perspective of mutual, and this is where complementation and mutual partnership is, is, is going to prosper. And, and to me, I, I look at other um, areas in the Philippines as potential travel destinations. Right now, my domestic department is mapping out different areas all over the Philippines now, looking at sustainable communities. And we're looking at these communities precisely to, to, to harness the capability of our people who are out there in, in rural communities that have not been touched by tourism to become part and parcel and become stakeholders in tourism. It is more of um, capacity building and making them part of the entire dynamism of tourism and making sure that even their products, their gastronomy, their natural cuisine, their artisans, their, their paintings, their, their wood carvings and all of that are focused and they are given the opportunity to, per, to be part of a, um, an industry that is all-inclusive. So this is where uh, our new direction is come going at the moment, is that, um, uh, just an example now, uh, we've looked at rivers 
and waterways in the Philippines. In, in, a lot of times we're marketing beaches and a lot of mountains, but we've overlooked the fact that we are archipelago and that we have waterways and rivers. And in these waterways and rivers, there are communities that live along these banks. And what if we create river tours? River tours. And all of these rivers are, are all connected and actually empties out in beaches. And to us, and the new direction now is identifying all of these rivers all over the Philippines and making sure that communities around these rivers are also given the opportunity to, to excel and to be part of the tourism industry. Making sure that even their own um, um, products, for instance, they, are, um, they have uh, weaving. Yes. In, oh, in communities. Speak, yeah. Speaking of which, uh, you're speaking for yeah. the small guys. Yeah. Again, brands, products, or services. This is where the whole community can participate. Yeah, Inclusivity. Correct. You get to say. You get to have a say, a stake in prom in promoting your own little corner of the Philippines. I just want to promote in that sense. Then, handwoven Philippine textile from Style Isle PH, Abaca fiber accessories from Twinkle Ferraren, these little guys have a sense of actually contributing to, again, tourism, to making it work, sustainable. And, correct. And what's nice is all our, our, our fabrics, they have stories. Yep. They have stories to tell. And this is where interest is going to be drawn. People have uh, stories, our artisans, our, artisan, uh, uh, our artists and artisans have stories about their products, their own products. And this is where we're going to build on content and give uh, and, and, and uh, draw interest to them. But that's what's not, let's give that a round of applause because again, you cannot sell what you don't have. And we have a lot already. But that, sorry, yes, George, you want to add on something? I'd just yes. like to add, earlier I mentioned that I wear two hats. I'm also the ASEAN BAC uh, member. Um, you know, somehow our ASEAN, our ASEAN partners are doing something right. Like Thailand has 36, 38 million. Indonesia is much more, has about 20 million, I think. And Malaysia, they must be doing something right. And, and talking about tourism, we're not here to cannibalize each other's market. I wish that the, our ASEAN partners can help us, you know, do a big data analysis. Those people who are visiting Thailand, we can ask them, have you visited the Philippines? That alone will give us some insights. Those who visit Bali, we can ask them, have you come to the Philippines? Have you been to Boracay? Have you been to Bohol? We need data. I mean, these things, you know, if you have to be focused on targeting which market you want to hit. And we have our ASEAN friends, ASEAN friends, and I hope that this can be tabled in one of the discussion, that you give us certain data that will be helpful for us to maybe co-brand or co-promote Philippine as a tourism site. Partnership, cooperation. Let's work on that. Devin, thank you for bringing that up, George. So far, we're championing the small guys. We're talking about the actual destination, 7,100, 7,600. It's the little parts all over the Philippines. But don't forget, to also get there, let's talk about the big guys now. Roads, airports, boats. The big guys also need to come into play. So I'm, yes, I'm eyeing you, Ms. Uh, Cholo. Tieza is tasked to not just look for foreign investments, but locals to make the big things happen. The little guys are working. They're already working. But we need help to connect it all. So uh, how would you like to touch on this one? Uh, three things. I think the first one, which was also discussed in the first forum, is the Manila Cruise Program. We kept Cruise. on saying this, that um, we cannot build 7,000 airports on 7,000 islands. But we can bring a boat to the 7,000 islands. So one of the things that we're trying to do right now is check the feasibility on how to build a cruise port that will connect all the other islands that will help ease the load from all of the airports that's happening. Master not plan. only in Manila, but everywhere. Yeah. Cebu, Master Bohol. Uh, the volume is already there. Finding a way. And then the other thing that we have to do is making sure that the reason that we're doing this is they can go to the different areas that have not yet been really developed yet. Why? 
The infrastructure is not yet ready. We know that there are infrastructure gaps. Let them stay, go visit the area, see the potential of the different site, but do their business inside the boat. Finding a way that once you see that the potential is there, that's when we master plan. We're actually looking at different places right now. Uh, Ormoc, Shargao, uh, Corregidor, San Vicente is a perfect example of a master planned area. There is a lot of potential. How can anyone approach you then? Because we're highlighting business opportunities yeah. here. I'm yeah. sure a lot of you will say, Sa probinsya ko, sa amen. Yeah. we have that, we have that. Yes. But how can they make okay. it happen? We're, tr we're very closely coordinating with the LGU units, but we also have our own office that really accepts because we know that the need for the tourism enterprise zones within the different areas of the country, they really need a lot of investment. And we're not talking micro, we're talking macro to micro. From the utilities, power, water, sewer. A perfect example is already from brown side to green side development. Brown side in Boracay. It, sewer was a bigger, biggest reason why uh, it was a concern. Shargao, medical facility, hyperbaric chambers. These are the things that we're all doing. We're caught between a rock and a hard place that we have a lot of catching up to do. Well, I like that you actually brought up Boracay on that point. Because right now, considering what we are promoting, there are so many opportunities to start, to get on the bandwagon, to do things right. Because some are already exploited. We have a lot of popular destinations, but they've been, uh, like, you know, overused, right? So how to address that, to just get things right, instead of having to rehabilitate, redo things? How would you, especially both private and public, how would you address those issues. We already cheered for the new guys, the, uh, the emerging possibilities and opportunities, but now the bigger scale, the, the redoing of things. Yes, I think the biggest example was what, what just happened recently in Boracay, the rehabilitation of the area. Now, even before it happens in other locations, we're already going there. DOT, TPB, TESA, and all of the other departments are really working together to make sure that the learnings from this specific island that had to go under closure will never happen to other locations. And then making sure that it all starts with the capacity. Find out what's the number and deal with it. And then diffuse that capacity to a different area in each different section of that, that specific site. One can go to the beaches this day, the next day they can go to the mountains. Finding a way to have a program. I think it's very crucial what Sir George said. Education and making sure Skills. that the people are aware make that there is a schedule that they can follow. And deliverables. Yes, yes sir. sir George. Uh, you know, what's important is for us, not just like what happened to Boracay. You know, we clean up the mess. But we have to move forward. We have to project how many tourists we would like to gain. 20% a year? So we need to in put in those facilities. I know like Bali has a problem. There's not enough water because too many tourists. But now they're projecting in so many years that they can accommodate 10 million tourists. And the same thing we should do with Boracay and other scenic spots. We got to project how many tourists we would like to have and put in the infrastructure needed. Boracay cannot just stop there. It's a brand. So we, we, could, we should keep on pushing the envelope. How many tourists can we accommodate if we put in the necessary infrastructure, sanitation, whatnot? Thank you. Governor Alvarez, of course, one of the examples is Palawan. You are ready. You promote, you've done this projection, you've done this uh, expectation of growth to be ready. You've already broken it down earlier for us. Yes, uh, tourism is our only economic driver. Uh, as of two years ago, it already contributed 36% uh, of our total economy. And Palawan contributes 55% of the total member of our region contribute. 55% uh, of the whole region. Knowing that, uh, we're preparing Palawan to uh, be more accessible. Uh, since 2013, 2013, our uh, GDP was negative 1%. And 2017, because of our e economic trust and also our tourism trust, drove us up to 6.2 in 2017. Let's That's give that why a round of applause. Palawan is so changed now. And that opportunity created not only for the small guys, 
but also for the medium and the large guys to come in. So we're providing all the necessary infrastructure for the three uh, sectors uh, to enjoy or to take part in the economic revolution. Uh, we have mining, but mining will not stay there forever. It will, at one point, stop. And uh, tourism is our only driver. We have 1,728 islands out of our 7,671 islands in the Philippines. So specific. <laughs> we want to invite the whole of Manila to create uh, also or to contribute uh, in the economic development of Palawan because the Langkawi experience, the Thailand experience, the Europe experience, and the North American experience uh, taught me how uh, to do things right in Palawan. Nice we're doing the sewer, we're doing water system, and sewer can be second to water because without sewer, strong yeah. water, sewer cannot be done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. we, we're very proud to say that uh, in Palawan, we will be ready to accept about 5 million tourists. We're already 2 million tourists now. We are ready to accept 5 million tourists in five years' time. Our envy is our neighbor, Kota Kinabalu, having three and a half million tourist arrivals, 80% of whom are Chinese. We have created a special relationship with island economies, because we're an island. We have uh, uh, gone to Hainan, and Hainan is uh, our sister province. Hainan having 53 million tourists a year, we are targeting to exchange some percentage, and we are now uh, doing our job by uh, sending our scholars to Hainan, and the Hainan sending their scholars to Palawan to learn as others. In two to three years, we will connect Hainan to the southern part of Palawan, having Balabak as our El Nido. We have El Nido in the north, we have Balabak in the south, it's more beautiful than El Nido. We are building an airport right now, dual use by the Air Force, and commercial, also regional access like Coron, and later on in the next five years, two more international access airport, one in the south, which is in Brooks Point, and another one in Tai Tai, will accept the Airbus 350s of uh, Jimmy Bautista, <laughs> Philippine Airlines. So that is how we are developing Palawan, and we hope uh, everyone we'll is support. Uh, will support that and will go and visit us to see for themselves how we are doing it there so that not only the uh, outside people of uh, ASEAN, but mostly the people in Manila will build a second home in Palawan because remember, Palawan is the only earthquake-proof island wow. in the whole ASEAN continent. No earthquake in Palawan. Thank you. Go. Governor uh, Alvarez. I'll, I'll be seeing you. You let, you let me know what to buy. <laughs> Anyway, can so, I just put in one? Okay, my last go ahead, comment. Sir George. Go ahead. The, you know, talking about tourism, I think uh, it's very important for us, uh, even with the Department of Education, to inculcate in our young the importance yeah. of tourism. Yeah. I will share with you my experience. I traveled to Turkey one time. We go on a road tour, and uh, we, we, we were in a small town. And at night, me and my family, we walked. And some of the places the place we walked were, light, were not very bright. When I came back, I commented uh, to my guide, I said, you know, it's very safe here. And his comment was, you know, tourism is a lifeline for us. We depend on tourism for economy. So everyone, every, every citizen, I would believe, is conscious of the fact that tourism is important for them, for the economy. And I would like, I mean, in our country, I think we should have that frame of mind and have even the Department of Education be involved. We're in our young, at a very st early stage, they are aware that tourism is a key player for our economic growth. Thank you. Thank you, George. Actually, again, uh, going back to what, uh, what Governor Alvarez just did, it's the execution of a master plan. Sure, uh, the destinations are working on themselves, but you mentioned partnerships all the way to even involving Malaysia. It's really a big scale 
trickling down to the small ones so everybody benefits. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Edgar would like to say something also as well. He wanted mm -hmm. to pipe in earlier. Yeah, so um, to make this work also, no, Isa, I, I want to take this opportunity to, to tell to all the, uh, the LGUs because we need all the national government to maybe help LGUs educate not only the kids but also the, uh, the technical people like the uh, building officials, city engineers, because these are the people who maintains the, uh, yeah. the sidewalks, the cleanliness of the city. Technical. So we need them. And, we, and because of the growth that uh, what's happening right now, the influx of the tourists. So of course, all of this has to be educated also. To, to be, uh, all of these people has to be educated. So number two, uh, maybe we need to have more campaign in, uh, in the regulations of the... Uh, how to secure infrastructure for local government because we cannot rely on the national level to do all the infrastructure including down to the barangays and the barrios. So the problem right now, you can see some disconnect from uh, business sector, local business sector and the local LGU because of the clarity of the, uh, of the regulation on how to build infrastructure because you can have the local investors to do all the infrastructure locally. You don't need to rely everything from Manila, from the national government. Maybe we need this uh, more, uh, though the national government has already laid down the uh, framework, but I guess on the local government part, we need to, uh, we need to educate or maybe do more communication to let Expand. everyone know. So that all the public sectors, not uh, private sectors, not only from the, government, uh, from the Manila side, but also in the LGU can participate. Thank you very much, Edgar. Would you like to ch add to that, Cholo? Every time I hear investments and uh, money, I look at you. <laughs> yes, actually, that's why we were discussing the importance of tourism enterprise zones. Because most, if not all of our tourism enterprise zones, are coordinated with the LGU. I think that would be a sample or the proof of There's concept the solution of how, there. Yeah, how we to can do coordinate. It. But again, we have to catch up because we need to do this not only like what Sir Edgar was saying. It has to be done everywhere down to the, to the barangay, barangay level. level. Yes. Sorry, uh, Razip, can you relate to how the Philippine situation is shaping up? Can you relate to it or Malaysia is ahead? <laughs> well, um, I can see that the uh, Philippines is, is uh, on the right track where they, they recognize the importance of tourism. And uh, to relate to the point that has been mentioned earlier, that uh, we, we used to have the same uh, problem where not many people like to say about tourism. When they do plan, planning, you know, uh, tourism always the last thing uh, in their agenda. But now we can see that from the very below up to the high uh, platform, you can see that tourism is one of the very important agenda uh, for the economy because the, the, the return is so high and then it also has big impact to the society. And again, I would like to also to respond to uh, about the carrying capacity. While we are so eager, so motivated to have Invest. numbers, yeah. a million, three million, and four million, but again, as I mentioned just now, we have to check again our infra, our readiness, and also the skill that's mentioned by uh, Mr. George. Mr. George just now that whether the, uh, the infrastructure, the facilities, having the right people with the right skill, and then whether they have the right support, the, the system is there or not, and the financial part is there or not, and also the, uh, the, the support from uh, both private sector and also the, from the government sector. And again, uh, at the end of the day, while we want to have uh, more number, more tourists coming into a country, we want to see the balance. At the end of the day, yield counts. We're talking about per capita because that is the measure that we want to see whether the destination uh, succeed or the other way around. So this should be a balance between arrival and also tourist receipt. Yes. We have to drive towards positive results. Thank you very much, Razib. So on that note then, I think I'd like to hear from my interveners because our panelists have been doing such an amazing job, yes? Sharing with us such wonderful insights. Are you guys still with me?
Thank you very much. <laughs> but I'm going to turn over to my interveners, Alec and uh, Miss uh, Karen. Anything you'd like to pipe up, uh, share, out of the wonderful discussion that we've been having on stage? Check. There you go, Alec. Karen. The, the panelists actually gave great inputs. Oh, yes. Okay. Today, we, are, we actually have in the crowd, in the audience, local government units. So when we talk about local tourism development, they're actually the most important actor at the ground. So all of you represent organizations that have key impact to tourism, planning, site development, promotions, accessibility, connectivity, investments. So if a local government unit would ask you what, because in reality, when they look at the tourism value chain, they're so overwhelmed with the, so many things that need to be done to make a destination market ready, tourist friendly. So if you were to be asked by a local government unit, what would be the most important advice that you can give them in terms of the, the job that you do to help develop and promote tourism in the Philippines? Most important advice. Let me tweak that question to, where should they start? start yes, yes. What should they work on? Am, is that that's okay? Right, that's yeah, right. Yeah, what should, because there's so much. We, we said everything, infrastructure, water, sanitation, security, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Where should they start? What should they prioritize? Who would like to take this? Go ahead, uh, Edgar. Uh, uh, as, med, uh, as mentioned by Mr. Pacholo, no? so you have to start with master planning. But however, after master planning, what we always fail is on the execution side. So, of course, you have to, to understand the legal framework. So, of course, LG has to have a good coordination with the national government, with the uh, agencies to, um, to know the legal framework. Then they can invite the investors, whether from national level, Manila side, or from the local investor, to invest in their uh, area. I think that is the most uh, critical part that they have to do now in do, uh, setting up all this infrastructure. Like Governor have mentioned, it's good that we have Governor. So Palawan is very way advanced, but we still have other cities, other nice cities, plenty of nice destinations. However, it's just lack of infrastructure, lack of utilities, water, power, everything. But they have a lot nice, uh, fantastic sites. So we just need, uh, we just need uh, this... We just need to educate this uh, LGU, some of the ALGUs, so that we can promote more of our, uh, and we can absorb more tourists. Educate of the master plan. Educate them regarding the master plan so we can act accordingly. Yes, to yes. we can execute the master plan. There you go. Hindi kanya-kanya, ha? This is all part and parcel. Yes, yes. Cholo. Um, just to give an idea, because we always deal with the LGU, uh, the biggest concern that we always get is when we ask the LGU, is there a tourism complement in your area? You have to give us the numbers. That's the biggest concern. Tell us. That's why I love dealing with Governor Alvarez. Is when you talk to him, he knows his numbers. How many airports? How many lanes does he need? How many things that he has to do? Um, last year alone, we approved roughly about 1.5 billion in terms of infrastructure projects. And we have about 3 billion still running in the market right now, which is still... Uh, in continuous, it, it's, it's, still in the, it's still in different stages of construction. And then the moment we see these things, that's when we start dealing with the private sector and communicating in behalf of the LGU. There's a component here that the private sector can come in. Would you like to invest? That's where we can help. Tourism enterprise zones, master planning, and then dealing with what are the requirements post the plan. So LGUs, you need to know your numbers. You need to know your area so that we can work together. Okay. How about Alec? Would you like to share? Uh, this is, uh, I'd like to address this question specifically to Sir George and Mam Venus. As a company that works at the ground level with uh, local tourism providers, we appreciate very much the promotions that are uh, being uh, given towards emerging destinations. Now, a, a big problem that a lot of these destinations uh, encounter is accessibility to services, uh, specifically training and um, 
uh, connectivity services, it, it's very hard to develop these communities, develop these destinations uh, without uh, communications access. We have been working very hard, but it's very difficult to scale it up. So how do you think we could address these issues um, more directly? Communications technology. Yes, ma'am. Am I hitting that right? Uh, Sir George actually really highlighted on this one. Yes, earlier, I think uh, during our brief meeting, I mentioned that I think uh, connectivity is very important, especially the ICT. Uh, well, not only for access to information, but it is also the game changer for the small guys. Okay? You have the small uh, company involved in uh, tourism, but they're far out as far as connectivity to banking. You know, this is where fintech can come in. I mean, people can book their package online and they can receive a down payment or whatnot. So that is also very important. That's connected to the ICT, okay? And um, I just like to add, you know, even for Filipinos, when they go on tour, of course it's sightseeing, but the other aspect that is very important is shopping, okay? Everybody wants shopping. And I've been wondering how come in the Philippines, we don't facilitate the tax rebate system we want the Philippines to be also a shopping destination. The operation, the malls, the overhead is lower. I think we can sell things tax-free cheaper, provided that we can have a workable tax-free fund scheme, effective. So they can buy expensive items, but they can get their tax-free fund you know, straightforward. And I think that's important, that the shopping aspect of tourism is also an area that we must focus. So I, I just like to add that input, uh, you know, relating to what you're saying, uh, especially in the far-flung area. When they have tourists, they want to buy things, they want it cheaper. If that as, uh, tax aspect can help, it would be crucial to them also. Thank you. Thank you for the suggestion, Sir George. Cholo, would you like to add anything? Um, with regard to communication, I think one of your concerns is when the tourist goes to a specific site, what we wanted to build was also tourism assistance centers, wherein the communication or anything that would require or the tourists would require is available there, from the smallest to the charging stations to information on what places to go, uh, the one town one product policy, having the potential to put it there. These are the things that we want to build moving forward. And I think um, with what Sir was saying, this would be the anchor point where all of the other potential for business would, would, would happen. Because, again, in a different area, it's all about commerce, but doing it the right way. Thank you. I want to end on that note, doing things the right way. So, shall we give our panelists and interveners a big, big round of applause, please? I'm going to stop it right there because we have already had quite a nugget, a number of nuggets of wisdom from our panelists. At this point, I'd like to invite our... Uh, very own Mr. Joey Concepcion to please come on stage for a photo op. A round of applause for our panelists, ladies and gentlemen. Edgar Saavedra of Megawide, Ms. Marie Venus Stan of the Philippine Tourism Promotions Board, Governor Jose Chavez Alvarez of Palawan, Mr. Pocholo Paragas of the Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority, George Barcelon of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and Dato Mohamed Razipasan of our Malaysia Tourism Promotions Board. Thank you as well to our DOT Regional Director Karen Diopez and Joseph Ale Caradilla for being our interveners. This has been Forum 2, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you got nuggets of wisdom with our Discovering the Different Island Beats. A round of applause for Forum 2, please. <laughs>